You probably clicked on this video because you're also trying to become an engineer without a degree or you're just wondering how the f did this girl get her job? Well, not only did I have no degree, I had no boot camp, no portfolio, and I didn't even have to do a technical interview. And no, I did it my boss. Hi guys, my name is Mel. I'm currently an analytics engineer too, and I'm not only gonna tell you how I got here, but what I think the top three pros and cons to my journey are, and if I had to do it all over again, would I do it the same? I wanted to make this video because I have seen and watched dozens of videos on YouTube that say, if I became XYZ in 2023, here's how I would do it all over again. So I wanted to throw my hat into the ring because I feel like it's extremely non-traditional. And if you want to go the non-traditional route, I think you should do it. But there are things you should consider, which is why I'm putting pros and cons at the end of this video. So I do want to say that I did a year and a half of my computer science degree, as well as a year of kinesiology and a year of psychology and a semester of accounting. So you'd think I had enough credits to form a full degree, but I didn't. So I just now have a shit ton of student debt and no degree. But I did find out that I finally landed on something that I really enjoy and that was coding. So this all starts in January 2020 when I moved to a new city and I got a job as a bookkeeper. I didn't know yet that I wasn't going to finish my degree, but I was taking a semester off since I had just moved. Then COVID actually hits. Two months later, the office shuts down. I'm like, I'm not doing school online. So I messaged the VP of technology or whatever his role was at the time. And I'm like, how do I become an engineer? And he introduces me to two other engineers who kind of did the same thing. They joined the company with the intent to become an engineer. So I had lunch with them. They both ended up recommending the boot camp. So my plan from then on was to just save money for this 10 to $15,000 boot camp while I was making $36,000 a year as a bookkeeper in the first or second most expensive city in Canada. So it was gonna take me a while. Anyways, a few months goes by and the VP reaches back out to me and says, hey, look, app support is hiring an analyst. This is a really good stepping stone into tech. And suddenly I'm an analyst and I'm using SQL. And this is where everything makes sense, where my minor in statistics made sense. I don't know why I didn't think about going into uh, data and I just thought I was gonna do like web development or something. Um, but any, anyways, Everything made sense. Like, I love data. I love data. I don't know how it took me so long to figure it out, but here we are. So I figure out that next step is I want to become an analytics engineer. I offhandedly mentioned to someone that I was going to start looking at the data requests and picking out easy ones and seeing if I could do them after work. And he was like, why don't you just ask to be mentored? I was like, I didn't know that was an option. So me, the data manager and my app support manager sit down and we make an arrangement that every week or two weeks, I can spend a couple hours on a really simple task being mentored with the goal of eventually joining the team. So now we're actually in April, 2022. I'm coming back from Mexico from my birthday and the data manager messages me and says, how was your trip? I'm like, oh, it was great. You know, I'm gonna miss the sunshine. And he goes, Hopefully this brings you some sunshine. I'm actually gonna put the message here, but he goes, hopefully this brings you some sunshine. You're going to join the data team as an analytics engineer one on June 1st. And I literally burst into tears. I also just cry really easily, but I burst into tears because I'm like, what? I'm just an engineer now? Like, I, like what? I was so confused. I learned that they decided to forego the interview process because basically my year of mentorship was my interview process. They knew my work ethic, they knew what skills I had, I was in their private Slack channel, so it'd be really weird to kick me out if they hired someone else as the junior. <laughs> and I was already attending their meetings, I was like basically on the team, it just had to be official. I also want to mention that I was extremely annoying this whole time. Like. I think that I am where I am today because I have a knack for being annoying. I was like constantly asking for feedback. I was asking like, oh, what should my next like two or three goals be? Where are my weaknesses? Where do you think my weaknesses are? What can I work on? I'm like constantly asking for feedback, feedback that at times made me cry. <laughs> but um, I am maybe a bit of a masochist. I love work that makes me want to like bang my head on the wall. I love complex bugs and stuff like that. but. 
Anyways, so I do think it's because I was extremely annoying um, and I worked really hard. I figured out where my weaknesses were, where the gaps are, and I just worked on those. But I will still give you what I believe are the top three pros and cons of my journey. And finally, I will admit if I would do it the same way if I did it all over again. So pro number one is that I do think this happened much faster than if I had gotten my degree because I did the math and I think I would have finished my degree around the same time that I got hired as a level one or it would have been around the time that I got promoted to level two. So I do think it expedited things. Pro number two is that I have a ton of hands-on experience now, especially within my company. I think that is actually the reason that I was able to go from level one to level two so quickly is that when I joined the team, it's not as if I joined a new company and I had to learn like their specific workflow and processes and like maybe get some business context. Like I knew the business inside it out since I started as a bookkeeper and then I did app support and I had to work with like every single team at the company. When I joined, I got to focus on my technical skills only because I knew everything about the business. I had business context. I got to start leading projects like right away as a junior. So I think that's why I got my promotion really fast as well is I got to focus strictly on technical skills and everything else like I already knew about my job. For pro number three, I can't actually say if I'm more proud of myself now than if I had gotten my degree because I don't know how it feels to have gotten my degree. So I do feel like I really earned it more. Like I feel like I had to put a lot more behind getting this job than just like nailing an interview. I'm not saying that's not hard. Don't, please don't come at me. Getting a degree is hard. Doing advanced projects in your GitHub is hard. And nailing an interview is hard. Interviewing period is hard, but I'm just saying for me personally, I think I feel a lot better about myself grinding to get the job in the workplace than if I had just nailed my interview. Con number one is probably the worst con. And I do think that a lot of people still feel this way, but it is imposter syndrome. I have terrible imposter syndrome because sometimes I'm like, do they actually know that I don't know anything? Like, how did they give me this job? Like maybe they would have realized I know nothing if I went through the interview process. Like I have these types of thoughts and sometimes when I pick up a task and it's the lingo is what gets me the most. I'll pick up a task and be like, I have no idea what you're asking me to do. And then as soon as my manager is like, you know exactly what this is asking, you just didn't understand it in this wording. So I get major imposter syndrome all the time. Like the other day, um, someone asked me what DDL versus DML is. And I was like, I have no idea what you're saying. But once they explained it to me, I'm like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Con number two is making the job hunt a lot harder because now that I have tried looking for a new job recently, although I feel very experienced and I know the like skill level that I have and the amount of complexity that I do. Not having a degree, there are a lot of people out there who still want you to have a degree and they won't even look at you. They won't give me an interview because I don't have one. Con number three is related to number two and it's essentially adds to how I don't look good on paper and it's really hard to find a job. Uh, it's because I felt like I was learning so much on the job, even outside of work, I was learning for the job that I didn't work on a portfolio. I don't have things in my portfolio. Uh, like many other people, I have a pile of abandoned projects in a graveyard. So again, now that I'm looking for a job, I don't have a portfolio. I have one company of experience on my resume. I don't have a boot camp, don't have a degree. So uh, it's making it really hard that I felt like I just put all of my focus into like leveling up at work that I didn't work on my portfolio, like I said. So again, I don't look good on paper and I can't really show anyone my skills without doing that. I got my job at work because I got to actually show them in the workplace my skills, whereas now I'm looking for a new job. I have nothing to show them. So time for the big question. If I had to do it all over again, would I do it different? And the answer is no. Although it's really hard to find a job right now and my resume is quite pathetic, I'm really proud of myself. And this is actually, I think how I learned the most is just by diving in. Again, I said earlier that I'm a masochist. I wanna do tasks that make me bang my head on the wall. I dive right into the deep end and see if I can swim. And that doesn't work for everyone, but it works for me. And although I actually did like school and I 
love homework. I did homework for money. I'm not upset. I love the way that I did things. And I'm, like I said, I'm really proud of myself. If you stuck with me this far, I just want to say thank you for watching my video. I hope my story didn't disappoint. Honestly, I just, if I could inspire one person to continue their journey, I know it's hard. I know you're going to feel like an imposter. I still feel like an imposter, but you can do it. I promise you just have to work hard. That's really all you need is just consistency. And I promise that you can do it. I have refilmed the end of this video more times than any other part of this video. And it's just because I don't know how to say without cringing, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I don't know yet how I wanna finish my videos, but do know that I would love to continue making content. I do wanna make more videos. I don't know exactly what direction my channel is gonna go in, but for now, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up and let me know if there's anything you wanna hear. See you in the next one. Did I just say see you in the next one?